The S4 from Infinix is an entry-level smartphone and it's trying to make its own spot in the less than 10,000 rupee smartphone range with some features that are first in class and we'll talk more about it in the video but let's just go ahead and unbox the device and see everything that comes along. So there you go guys that's the Infinix S4. Now it does come with a 6.2 inch IPS LCD display. It's got a 32 megapixel front facing camera, a triple camera setup and I think these are some of the great features that they want to talk about and they're trying to bring to consumers for the first time in an entry level smartphone that's less than 10,000 rupees. But for now let's dive into the box and see what else we've got. So first thing you've got a regular charger, no fast charging, no super fast charging, no warp charging, it's just your standard regular charger. You get a micro USB cable, does not come with type C port for data syncing or charging. And okay, that's the ejection pin. So let's just get that out of the way. Some documentation not required. And you do get a screen protector inside the box. It would have been great if they could have just installed and given it along with the phone. But that's pretty much it. So there you go guys, that's the Infinix S4 and I'm quite impressed by how all of these entry level smartphones now have a pretty good build quality, really brilliant colors and an overall ergonomic feel when you hold them. And Infinix S4 is one of them. Just look at how good that blue looks. It's actually quite nice and of course all of that is plastic at the back. You can just tell by touching it but it doesn't feel cheap at all. It's pretty light and pretty good for a one hand use as well. You know, the size is actually perfect. And of course, the highlight of this phone is that within 10,000 rupees, it's the first phone that gives you a triple camera setup. You get a primary lens, you get an ultra wide lens and you get a depth sensor for beautiful bokeh shots. You know, those photographs where the background comes out blur. It comes with a fingerprint and quad LED at the back. Let's just go over the specs real quick. So it's running Android 9 Pie layered on top with XOS version 5, which we will talk about in a bit. It's powered by a 2 GHz octa-core processor and runs on 3 gigs of RAM. It's got a triple camera system at the back, a 13 megapixel primary lens, 2 megapixel depth sensor and an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens and all of this with a quad LED, which I'm sure would do a great job in extremely dark conditions. And even as a torch, it's just going to be really good and bright. The S4 has a large 6.21 inch HD IPS LCD display and a screen to body ratio of 89%. It's got a brightness of about 500 nits and a 19.5 is to 9 aspect ratio. At the bottom you get a micro USB port, you do have the 3.5mm headphone jack and the speaker grill right over there. From a design and build perspective it's nicely rounded, it fits pretty well in the hand with a good grip and the plastic does not feel cheap but obviously it's not as premium as metal or glass and the size is actually pretty good for one hand use. Now the only issue that might one might face is that it's a bit too wide so small hands will have an issue with single hand use to some extent. Now this phone is extremely light despite the 4000 mAh battery. I mean it's, it's impressive, it's really really odd to feel it so light despite a huge battery. So I think that's a pretty good plus. And it comes with a dual SIM tray along with space for a micro SD card which can be expanded up to 256 gigs. Talking about the OS, it's running Android 9 Pie layered on top with proprietary XOS. It's an interface which is very similar to experience that other manufacturers provide. You've got your icons at the bottom, swipe down to access notifications or your quick settings, swipe up to access a list of apps that you could launch from. There's a handy little edge drawer to help you access your frequently used apps or tools right here. So, you know, you can customize it and place shortcuts that you use very often. That's just a good thing to have. Rest everything is pretty much the same. Standard Android settings with some personalization options. You know, there are some customizable themes available. So you could just go to the theme store by long pressing on the home screen and you can access from a ton of themes. Most of them are free and you can have a new skin on your phone every day. There are also some handy actions and gestures available for you to customize. Uh, it just makes you know smartphone experience better. For example, you could just lift your phone and it's going to start scanning for your face to unlock the device. So that's pretty quick. There is double tap, so you could just lock your phone and you could swipe down with three fingers and it'll take a screenshot for you. So all of these are pre-built into the phone. You could go to your system navigation and you can change that. For example, right now I have gesture navigation, but if you're used to having keys, 
or you know, you know the pixel type mixed navigation, you could opt for those as well. Overall, from a user experience perspective, you do get all the features that you get on any Android 9 Pie smartphone. However, nothing too exciting or out of the box that you wouldn't have heard or known about already. Oh, and the phone does come with fingerprint unlock, which is surprisingly pretty fast for an entry-level smartphone. It's just a simple tap and it unlocks instantly. There's face unlock as well, but it's that bit slower than fingerprint unlock. I would prefer that any day over face unlock. Coming to the display, it's got a 6.21 inch IPS LCD screen and that's a pretty big screen. And the whole point of having a big screen is that you're able to enjoy videos really well and even uh, when you're playing games. So the experience overall is really nice and immersive. And even in terms of colors, I think they look pretty good. Uh, IPS LCD displays are not that great. They're not as good as let's say Super AMOLED, but here it is in front of you. I think the colors look good. They're pretty natural and I actually have no complaints Given the price point, it, I think it does a pretty good job. And then there's that notch at the top, so you do get a teardrop notch. And uh, the bezels at the top are actually pretty good. Uh, they're not too much. It's the chin at the bottom that really upsets me. Uh, it's a bit too thick and it makes the overall phone look a little too clunky. So you can see, you know, it's just today, that's not the design that you really want. It's too thick a chin and I would have actually wanted that shaved away. But let's go ahead. Uh, the brightness is an actual problem on the display. It's 500 nits, which is not too much. So on when you're outdoors and you know the sun is really bright, you will have a bit of a problem reading the screen. So be prepared for that. If you're, you're going to use your phone outdoors a lot, maybe think about it again. Let's talk about performance. I've already spoken about the processor and the RAM and given it's an entry level smartphone, I guess the S4 fare is just about decent. Now opening and closing of apps feels a bit sluggish and even when taking photos, saving it and then accessing it, it's not like you can do it in quick taps. It does feel a little slow to me and there are definitely some smartphones in the same range that do offer better performance than the Infinix S4. I also did some benchmark tests for the Infinix S4 and as you can see the score is pretty low. Uh, that's expected out of an entry level smartphone. Uh, it just defeats about 10% of the users which means there are 90% of the users who've got a better phone than this one. And of course I did test out a couple of games uh, that people might be interested in. So games like Asphalt 9, you can see the loading over there, it's not even moving. Now we know Asphalt 9 is a pretty heavy duty game, it's quite intense, it does employ um, some graphics uh, capabilities of the phone and it's right in front of you it's it's really suffering from uh, you know a really poor frame rate it's taking a lot of time to render the frames and being able to play the game uh, I think I guess the 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 default setting of graphics is what's causing it I could all the way go inside and change it to performance but I'm, I can assure you that that's not going to improve the game a lot so Asphalt 9 definitely not being able to play on the Infinix S4. But yeah, let's let's try PUBG. Now PUBG is actually a game that's been optimized very well across all types of Android smartphones. So it's still taking a lot of time to load the game and that's, that has to do with the low RAM. It's just three gigs. So definitely loading of games is not going to be too quick. And it's right in front of you. It was there for Asphalt 9. It, it did take a very long time. Now PUBG, it automatically sets the graphics to low so it's got that internal optimization it just looks at the hardware detects it and then tells you which is the best mode to play in and now that it's set to low graphic quality it's actually playing very well you know i don't i don't really see any sort of uh, frame rate lag or uh, any any kind of hiccup and although it's a multiplayer game so that means it's also utilizing the phone's um, network capabilities to be able to play smoothly and I think it's doing a pretty good job. So if PUBG is the kind of game you want to play, the Infinix S4 is actually just about okay. It's going to give you a good time. Uh, but yeah, something like Asphalt 9, probably not. However, the Infinix S4 does offer one very compelling reason to be purchased. The fact that it supports a triple camera system and that's the first smartphone to have that in less than 10,000 rupees, I think is a pretty big deal. Now. You've got a 13 megapixel primary lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor for those really beautiful bokeh shots. The fact that you now have the choice to take any and all kind of photos at this price point is actually quite nice. Sure, the lenses in themselves might not be too great, but with a bit of tweaking and filters and ensuring that you have good lighting, 
I think the photos do come out quite well. Now I've taken a couple of shots and I'm just going to share them with you shortly. And one more tiny detail, it features a quad LED. Most phones you know has dual LED, but this one has four LEDs put together. So great for low light shots. Now here you go guys, some shots that I've taken in, uh, you know, a little towards the evening at around five in the, in the evening. Uh, again, the lighting is good. So the pictures have come out nice and vibrant. They're actually pretty natural. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that it does not blow out pictures, but it does suffer from exposing some photos more than required. For example, in this one, the sand's too white. Now that's a picture taken um, from one spot using the regular lens, and that is taken using the ultra wide lens. And you can see the shift in colors, which is not that great. But yeah, the fact that you've got an ultra wide uh, option, I think makes it a really good and a compelling reason uh, if, if you're a, you know, a photography buff. Now, I did take some shots internally where the lighting was, was decent, not too great, and I think the pictures have come out really well. This is an outdoor night shot. It's somewhere around nine in the night. Um, it's absolute dark, and I think, again, for an entry-level smartphone, I think the camera's done a pretty good job. Uh, this is, again, an internal shot. I think the colors are quite natural, you know? I'm, I'm really surprised and amazed, and I think it, it, it's got to do with the AI camera that it has. This shot, okay, may not be that great, but still pretty decent. And the camera can shoot full HD videos at 30 frames per second. It's not too stable. Obviously, you don't expect things like EIS and OIS to be featured in, in phones that cost you so less. But nevertheless, I think you can see that I can get really close to a subject. I can tap to focus and it becomes really clear, creates a really nice background, in the, uh, you know, a blurred background. So, yeah, I think from a video perspective, the quality may not be as crisp, although it does say 1080p but it's probably the bit rate of the video is not too high, which is why you do see lack of detail. Um, it adjusts the light pretty fast and that's, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, and even while I'm moving around, it does not have any rolling stutter. And again, it's adapting to the light pretty quickly and I really like that. So yeah, not a great video camera, but pretty decent actually. And let me quickly take you through the camera interface. You've got all your modes at the bottom. So you've got beauty, bokeh, which takes care of the, uh, you know, the depth sensor lens. You've got AR shot and you've got video, which is 1080p. Uh, you could go and change the setting to 720p or to 480p if required. And you can turn the torch on while shooting. Uh, that's the regular lens. And if you want to shift to ultra wide, you just have to tap that setting over there and it's going to activate the ultra wide lens. And another big thing is that it's the first smartphone in under 10,000 rupees that features a 32 megapixel front facing camera. So guys, if you're looking for a, for a selfie camera in that range, hands down, this is probably your best option. Now the phone has a 4,000 mAh battery, which is actually kick ass for a smartphone like this that does not have a very hungry, power hungry processor. It does not have a very high resolution display. So it'll definitely last you two days under regular moderate usage. And definitely one day if you're, you know, blowing out uh, videos all day long. Now, there are a couple of AI smart power saving options that you can enable if you want. And there are a couple of advanced settings that you can play with to even further prolong your battery life. But again, I don't think you would have to do that. The battery capacity is pretty big in itself and it'll last you very well. So that's it, guys, about the Infinix S4. Not a very powerful smartphone for a price of about 9,000 rupees. But if you're looking for a really good camera smartphone that can take great pictures and great selfies, definitely go for the Infinix S4 in under less than 10,000 rupees. There's probably nothing that can compete with that.